Hi guys, so I just want to give you a peek into our Friday routine. Every Friday at our house is pizza day. So the kids love it. They absolutely love it. And since we've been growing our own produce, it's been really, really great. Um, I'll show you what's going on in the slow cooker. We'll go and get some spinach and then I'll show you when we put the pizzas together. And of course the end product. So in the crock pot we have little cherry tomatoes that were very abundant this year. Um, so what I do is I harvest them as they get ripe and then I put them in freezer bags and um, then when I'm ready to make a pot of pasta sauce I just um, throw them into the slow cooker and I just let them get on with it. Um, you'll see we've got some golden zucchinis. Um, it was the last of the harvest, so we just cut up, sliced it up, and um, I froze it, and it usually extends the pasta sauce quite significantly. So guys, we're back from the garden. We've harvested some spinach, and obviously we've rinsed it quite well. Uh, there are two ways that I usually do it. I either take a scissor, and I just cut out the vein, because that's a bit hard for slicing up in pizza or of course this goes to the compost heap or you can take um, after you've rinsed it you can just take a knife and just slice out the vein I don't think the one method is better or easier than the other it's whatever you prefer or whatever you have at hand and then I just like to show you I um, harvested some Swiss chard which has got alpha-cyanins in you know the purpley red color so it's also it's like the spinach this is also actually a fork rook giant Swiss chard but we call it spinach so what I do is once I've cut this I leave it to wilt a little bit because I've on occasion put the fresh spinach on and um, you sort of tear it but at those times I found that actually the edges burn a little bit. So now I, I cut it up early. I wilt it a little bit and uh, slice it up and sprinkle it over the, the pizza. And then the cheese melts on top of it and then it doesn't um, burn the way um, it did if you don't do it. So, um, and then I'll show you the other toppings we have. And this is why Friday is a great day for the kids and for me. So guys, remember I told you that we make our top chicken topping, so sweet sticky marinade out of the bottle, whatever brand you choose, it doesn't really matter. And then the shredded chicken, I usually take huge, huge amounts of chicken, put it in my um, pressure canner, and that makes light work of it. Huge bags of chicken from frozen till cooked is a very, very short period of time. Then I just drench the chicken with the sauce and um, just make sure it saturates and then when we come to pack the pizzas you've got a nice barbecue sweet tangy chicken type dressing to put well not dressing topping to put on it so there you go guys the same pot that we had the little cherry tomatoes the garlic and um, the green onions um, oregano and things in it's cooked down I took the immersion stick immersion blender the little hand one and I blended it up I know it looks a bit greeny but that's because the cherry tomatoes of the variety that keeps a green tinge even though it's ripe so this will be our pizza base um, as far as the tomato sauce goes so guys of course we need uh, the bacon to be done for our pizza as a topping so I've taken some back bacon put it in my three trays and my military cook it's got a nice drift tray there this thing is a lifesaver i tell you and then i'm going to close it switch it on and then i'll choose the meat setting it's 25 minutes and i start it and that's all there is to preparing the bacon no extra pots nothing i'll check in between and see how it goes on because we don't want to totally dry it's still going to bake on the pizza but yeah, this is a little lifesaver. So guys, remember we started, it was 25 minutes we had to go with this little oven. And um, I think I'm smelling the bacon is ready. So let's have a look. Let's see 
what we can see. Um, yeah, it seems to me it's done enough because all I need to do is slice it and then put it on the pizza. Uh, just get something so I don't burn to show you. That's totally fine. This is also good enough so it can cool off and we can slice it. And the little tray at the bottom has caught the fat and the dripping. So there we go. Remember the, the bacon will still cook further on the pizza itself. So eventually, guys, it's time to build our pizzas. Um, during the time of uh, making pizzas every Friday, I've wised up a little bit. Um, I've taken my dehydrated Teflon sheets, these ones, just bought them on Amazon, actually for my dehydrator. And then I lay the pizza on here, and then it's easy just to slip it in and out of the oven. Um, after a while, they start looking like this. It's, um, it's clean, but it's stained from all the tomato and everything. And then I've also used these type of Teflon sheets that you buy at the barbecue shops. Um, I find that putting this at the bottom makes that the pizza gets crisper much better. And um, I slide it in and out. When I've finished, I'll show you. I actually put it in the dehydrator to dry up a little bit. Um, so it isn't the, the crust is not soggy. So let's start building pizzas. Hello, we are going to decorate the pizzas with everything we want on it and don't want on it. It's going to be different kinds, all of them. So we're going to get to decorating now. Thank you, Aiden. And yeah, so enjoy.
Thank <laughs> you.